Bienvenidos. Welcome to the Injury Prone Podcast. Yes, we've got not just one son of Mexican immigrants, dos. We've got two, familia. Uh, everybody out there, we're doing a little different. We're bringing the Injury Prone Podcast to YouTube. So uh, I'm one of, the, one of the co-hosts, Jorge Martin. But you know what, familia, everybody, we're bringing on, uh, I, I want to introduce the star of the show, El Estrella. Dr. Evan Porras, you started this. Let's uh, let's kick it off, mi amigo. I'm so excited to be here, man. Um, as you said, two sons of Mexican immigrants. Uh, I'm extremely excited, estoy emocionado, but I'm not the star. We are co-stars. We're co-starring. <laughs> a little bit of a twist. I have been just screaming into a microphone for, I don't know, four years now. I think it was the second year that I was doing this. I started doing the podcast, just screaming at a microphone. I'm, I was last year, I was screaming at a microphone. And now you had the brilliant idea, bring this to video, come into the 21st century. I'm a boomer uh, at heart. You are much more advanced when it comes to video, <laughs> audio, editing, chopping up, cutting up thumbnails. I'm lucky if I can turn my phone on. So I'm lucky to have you in my corner. Uh, I'm lucky to have you as a friend. First and foremost, I think that this would not work if we were not friends. And I consider you a, a very good friend, mi compadre in the industry. Hey, I'll tell you what, you're still going to get episodes of me screaming at the mic. Maybe there'll be video, maybe there'll be audio. We'll be honest. We're kind of building the plane as we're flying. We know that we want to do a show together. We know that it's going to come uh, on at least on Fridays, Friday afternoons during the NFL season. And we know that we're going to talk about injuries and you're going to get everything that you possibly can from us. Uh, it's going to be the only show hosted by two Mexicans in the history that I know of, that I know of. The only the only show hosted by two two Mexicans, um, so you're gonna probably get a lot of tequila talk, a lot of uh, taco talk, and probably a lot of stereotypical talk <laughs> when it comes to that kind of stuff. <laughs> so it's gonna be fun, a little bit of a Spanish flair. Um, mi gente, whether you're Mexican American, whether you're white, black, listen, everybody plays fantasy football. Let's let's be honest, everybody's on board. Uh, I'm on board with you, Jorge. I'm excited to to get this started. We don't know what it's gonna look like. We just know that it's gonna be there. We're going to take our bumps. We're going to take our lumps and we'll take feedback from the listeners. I have no problem taking feedback, um, but I'm excited to be here, man. It's not just about me. It's about us. We're going to take this show, try to, like I said, bring it into the 21st century. And I I wouldn't, I, I can't think of anybody else that I'd rather do it with. No, I, I, you know what? Sometimes you just need a teammate and uh, you know, I mean, you're, you're in the clubhouse with the, you know, Putting players back on the field uh, with the Minnesota Twins in their in their minor league system, some of the major leaguers rehabbing. So, and that's the thing. And you know, I, I think it's great. Uh, I, I'm honored to do this because I think you know, from you know, from our raza, our gente, that's something. I think that's big because we're we're showing other people that uh, si se puede. That you don't. It, it just doesn't have to be. You know, we don't have to look like everybody else. We don't have to sound like everybody else. We're gonna throw some Spanish in there, some Spanglish, a little bit of that. You know, we'll we'll talk about flying chanclas when we were kids and everything like that. So uh, <laughs> it's a little traumatic for me. It's a little traumatic for me. <laughs> but no, I think I, I think it's it's gonna be good. But I think that the the thing that's going to really keep com people coming back is the the information and i mean the, when we're talking about uh, injuries return to injuries return to play and i mean i i just plug for your book get familia if you haven't gotten this uh, gotten the injury prone playbook you need to i i read it on a plane and it, it so much information and el gran doctor he he makes sure to get updates to it out there so um yes it, it it's great stuff in there but yeah we're talking about that and you know what? There's going to be times where um, we're going to we're going to challenge each other. Uh, where you know where there will be times where I, I might I might ask you, hey, is this long enough? And is this long enough for the body to heal? And uh, and yeah, I, I I want you to make sure to, to you know that I know you're going to give me you know what what the hopeful, but also the pragmatic. And that's that's the thing because I know one thing that that uh, you know from my years with the Dodgers that we learned a long time ago. Don't ever trust what the players say. <laughs> Do not ever because they're wish casting. They're wishing that they get out there. So, um, but yeah. So, mi amigo, uh, there's you know we're we're here. We're on the cusp of the third preseason games. So luckily they're. There have been some injuries. Luckily, we you know we didn't have we haven't had Jordy Nelson uh, ten years ago or so. Where uh, you know a player, I mean obviously some players. You, you gave us some good news on Terry McLaurin, which we're going to talk about. But 
I thought it'd be kind of good to kind of go through some different players that we're that we're talking about that you just updated on your book. Some guys that we can actually uh, get some actionable information for the injury prone community. I mean, the, everybody. I mean, you've got a great following. We're going to bring this out there. We're going to be on YouTube, so you got our, our faces on there. So let's kind of start out with, uh, you know, some. Let, let's kind of really go down the line. Jackson Smith and Jigba. JSN. He's got a wrist fracture. Uh, you, you, you did a little, you did a little homework on that one. Yeah. So I did as much homework as you possibly can. There are going to be a lot of points that you have to consider when it comes to the Seattle Seahawks. Number one being don't trust what the players say. Don't trust what Pete Carroll says. This is just one singular example. Pete Carroll last year said Kenneth Walker and his groin issue, which last year it was an actual true hernia and intestinal hernia. He said, not a big deal. We're going to take care of it in-house or whatever he said. Uh, he'll be fine. It should be quick. Turns out Kenneth Walker, I believe, missed week one or went right up to week one down to the wire. He missed several weeks for, for his surgery. Uh, similarly, John Harbaugh can, can do, do the same thing. He said the same thing for a groin strain that, that Rashad Bateman had. Rashad Bateman ended up having surgery. So obviously these things can't really be, can't really trust it uh, when it comes to the coaches either. So what we do know, so let's strip it down, right? We know Adam Schefter reported they think Jackson Smith and Jigba can be back with it by week one. So I'll start with the best case because I think that's what people want to hear. In the best case scenario world, I'll tell you, it is possible, it is plausible that what happened is he landed on his wrist, Jackson Smith and Jigba landed on his wrist, fractured a small bone. They go in, it's a tiny incision. They pluck it out. They sew them back up. The only concern really is the incision. 10 days, 14 days, he can be back to rehab and doing what he needs to do. That's that's possible. That's the best case scenario. In that scenario, he's still kind of on the border for week one, but could go week one. Here's the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is that this is a wrist fracture. And it's a wrist fracture that's one of the most common wrist fractures. And that's going to be a six to eight week casting not just six to eight weeks when he's back it's six to eight weeks in a cast then he'll have to rehab then he'll have to come back now that is the worst case scenario i'm not saying that's what's going on i don't think that's what's going on and i don't think it's the most likely option or the most likely thing that's going on um there just aren't a ton of surgeries that would say you can come back in three maybe four weeks but if it, especially when it comes to the wrist and the hand and i'm telling you i work with wrists and hands all day Mm -hmm. maybe it's a small fracture um for example something like what's called a scaphoid fracture or something that's like on the outside of the wrist and that fracture you can just go in or do nothing for it but we knew he was going to have surgery um so they they maybe like i said plucked it out of there for now i would not count on seeing jackson smith and jigma until week two three ish i think that's like the most likely outcome can he be back week one i think so i wouldn't plan on it so you can still, here's the thing though. I think this is where a lot of people, where I lose a lot of people or maybe where I don't do a good job of enough, good enough job of communicating any player on this planet, when it comes to an injury that we assume isn't going to be a problem with him. And I don't think it's going to be a problem for him. If you draft that player, if he falls to the sixth round, I think that's still fine. I think if you miss two at most three games in this, in this scenario that we're discussing, which I think mm -hmm. is possible, uh, you're still going to be okay and you're still going to get that value back. Don't panic on early season volume. Don't panic for early season you know, loss of, losses of games. I still think that based on where Jason was going, he's going to fall probably to around the sixth. I'm still okay taking him there, but that I'm not going to go any higher, but I'm also not going to go any lower. Like This is pretty much like a let's take it day by day, and it shouldn't be an extended absence, like I said, unless they're totally pulling you know, the wool over our eyes. And, that, and that's the thing that, um, that, that I think, I, I think is really important that, that, that you're talking about is the injury realism. When they're talking about week one, it's really talking about the, the, the season after that, you know, he's, he's shown out so much and I know you're, you know, you're, you're a Seahawks fan. Uh, does the missed time, between now and you know the missed time on the field for a rookie is is that a concern for you? I think, and this is a good point that Graham Barfield is bringing up in our Discord. It's not 
good. So I'm not going to say that it's good. I'm not going to spin it as being good. But I mean, he did play in it, the, you know, the preseason game. That's when he got injured. And he's mm -hmm. at least been in camp for the last three, four weeks, right? He's at least been there. He was there for the initial installs. Could he fall behind? Yes. Is it the best case scenario? No. But I think that if we're talking, you know, something like Rashad Penny, who broke his hand, I think in like the first week of preseason as a, as a rookie, right. that's something different. But I do think that he could be okay because for these, these rookies anyway, you're not really looking for a breakout uh, until, you know, week six, seven, eight. So I think that, that I don't think that in this specific scenario, the time lost is as big of a deal. Okay. And then plus he's already played really well. And so that, that's, that's the one thing that I think that, that, that definitely, that, that definitely helps. And I mean, maybe he picks up, maybe there's some rust at the beginning, uh, shakes it off for a couple of weeks, but, uh, yeah. And I think, I think definitely looking, I mean, it's looking more at the back half of the season to, to, for him to really show out. I think so. I don't really think that, I don't think that this really changed when he would have broken out, if that makes sense. So if you're expecting him to break out week six, or seven, whatever. I, I don't think that changes. Oh, awesome. Well, you know what? Let, let's jump to a guy that that uh, that that had a pretty immediate break break breakout, and we've already talked about him. Uh, is Terry McLaurin? So, you know, uh, he he m suffered turf uh, a potential turf toe injury. When I hear turf toe, I remember Deion Sanders talking about it, and he said that uh, having turf toe and trying to play through turf toe is like grabbing a hammer and hitting it on your big toe, and and just repeatedly every time that you take a step. So every I, I think about that every time I think about turf toe. I thought about that for Terry McLaurin and, and all those times that I've already drafted. Um, but the reports were somewhat encouraging. Can you tell us uh, about the about those reports? Yeah, no. I, so turf toe is. A painful injury i know it doesn't it sounds like a cute little injury it's not it's 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 painful the connected tissue on the bottom side of the big toe where you plant is 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 damaged is hurt now here's the thing again the buckets that i think i don't do a good job of communicating you have buckets of severity and then you have buckets of diagnosis just because you're diagnosed with a turf toe doesn't mean that you're diagnosed with a grade three i need surgery Traylon burks type surgery type type injury type turf toe Right. This can be there's a, a large spectrum, a long spectrum of where how severe these injuries can be. What we know based off of the reports is that the x-rays are clean and Ron Rivera's quotes were weird, but he did. He was quoted as saying, basically, there was nothing crazy for the most part, which means there was probably some swelling, probably some inflammation there. We don't know the grade. We don't know the severity. Uh, and nothing has come out that it's super severe. The median time to return to play for NFL players after a turf toe issue is a, is 28 days. So again, median is the midpoint. 50% come after 28 days, 50% come before 28 days. Again, what we know based on what we've heard is that there isn't anything too concerning. If this was a Traylon Burks type uh, scenario, I think we would have heard that by now. I'm trying to use a little bit more of my feel. I've, I've been you know, accused of being very data centric. Uh, which is a good thing. But now I'm trying to integrate, now that I've been, this is year five, me doing this, I'm starting to integrate a little bit more feel. I feel that if this was more severe for Terry McLaurin and based on the data that we wouldn't, you know, this would be worse. I've been wrong in the past, but I just don't feel that this is a super severe issue. And with that, I'm not concerned. I'm just personally having a hard time drafting Terry McLaurin where he's going anyway at ADP. This isn't going to, you know, if I was drafting him, this wouldn't stop me from, from continuing to draft. I know we said we're going to do 20, 30 minutes. I've, I've droned on and on. So, so this is one of those scenarios, Jorge, where you got to push me. You got to tell me, Hey, shut up, get the cut to the point. <laughs> I, well, I think, I think that's, that's really actually good actionable information for on McLaurin. Uh, I know, I know we, I know you made Matt Harmon feel much better with your tweet earlier, uh, earlier today about that one. All right, let, let's jump over to George Kittle, soft tissue, tissue injuries, groins can linger. Uh, that they're, uh, uh, that they, and they, and they can, he's back at practice. So how much is that a good sign for him? No, it's a good sign. And the only concern is that this is a second time that George Kittle dealt with this in an off season. Last year, he dealt with this. He missed week one or one and two, I believe again, doing this off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to groin issues, after, you know, the ramp up is really something where so you've seen that Miles Sanders is dealing with it. Kenneth Walker is dealing with it. George Kittle is dealing with it. Soft tissue stuff comes up. It's not really something you can necessarily plan for or pre prepare for. 
as of now, he's back at practice. It seems like he's moving well. There is a chance of recurrence, right? If we look at at a history, a player's history of having a recurrent groin strain, you don't love to see it. There is some risk there that eventually he's going to need that surgery that Rashad Bateman had where he was out seven, eight weeks. I don't think that's like outside. You know, I don't think that's probable, but I don't. That's also not outside of the the possibilities. Uh, you know, in 2023. So. Again, given the fact that George Kittle's already boom bust, his touchdown rate was astronomical last season, and that 49ers offense is almost impossible to predict. You, you and I have talked about this. It, oh, yes. It's really tough. It's really tough for me to, to click draft, to hit draft when it comes to George Kittle, really at any point in drafts anyway. and But if you were drafting him, you know, and you needed an excuse not to, I do think that this is enough of a concern to just stop drafting George Kittle. Yeah, it's uh, oh, man. Yeah, expecting expecting him to throw to score eleven touchdowns again. That's just uh, that's no way. No, 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 I, you can't expect that again. I think his previous was six. So uh, yeah, looking at that and yeah, expecting big seasons from Ayuk and and Samuel and let's not let's not forget CM run CMC. So uh, yeah, that one that one's tough. Plus, I mean, yeah, you always talk about the you talk about. I think what's the recurrence rate? I think this was about thirty three percent in season. S- so for, for groin, point. for groin, I actually haven't calculated calculated it specifically for tight ends. Uh, we know that conservatively, the recurrence rate is actually a little higher. I don't have the specific number. I need to go back and calculate that. That's the only injury that I didn't do and put in the book just because kind of a, other than like the help that I've gotten from you for the research and stuff like that. When it comes to the, like the specific injury stuff, I'm sort of a one man show to get it out to the book. So I'm working on that. I'm going to work on the recurrence rates and I'm going to work on what it looks like when you know, the guys get soft tissues and they come back. I can't tell you for hamstrings, it's 34% in season, which mm-hmm. is very high. So, you know, I don't think that's the case here. Usually in the preseason teams take their time, which they should. They load it slowly. They rehab it slowly. They w- manage their workloads and guys can get back. But again, that risk is, is I don't have the specific quantifiable number, but the risk is non-zero. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, a hamstring that that did come up is Jerome Ford. Uh, for the Cleveland Browns, backup running back for for Nick Chubb, an important player, but um, hamstrings. Uh, they're they're talking about potential for Week One. To me, that says uh, he's probably out on Week One. Well, you know, this is a tough one, right? Because most uh, running backs, in fact, sixty or, or I want to say. I should have pulled it up here, right? I should get, give myself access to my own book. Uh, I want to say it's somewhere like 20, only 20% of running backs in season miss more than than two games. So three plus games, only 20% of running backs miss three plus games, which is of course three weeks. So I don't know how, I mean, this is obviously a severe you know, injury enough that they shut him down. I don't think it's Austin Eckler type levels. I think that it was enough to be a grade two. It was enough that it was more than tightness. It was more than pulling. Uh, it was a, 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 you know, a legitimate pull. You don't, you know, this is not uncommon to see in, in younger backs and younger players in general. So what you're going to see is him slowly ramp up. I do anticipate week one for now, again, because so few injuries are the Austin Eckler type. So few injuries are, are actually beyond three games, which would be, like I said, three weeks. I do think that he can be back by week one, but if we don't hear, again, we can always adjust, right? But if we don't hear that he's back, you know, in a couple of weeks. And that's definitely obviously a red flag, but hopefully by the beginning, the end of next week, you start hearing he's doing light drills on the field, individual drills. And then the following week, sort of integrating himself back into the team. That's what I anticipate, but we'll see what happens. Okay. Well, uh, you know, you earlier, we were talking, uh, players who popped at the end of, uh, at, at, you know, toward the end of their rookie seasons. I don't think there's anybody who's been as much of a league winner as Amon Ross St. Brown. And uh, last year he fought, fought through a, a foot injury. This year he, you know, picked up an ankle. It doesn't sound like that the coaching staff is not making it sound like it's serious, but I hear ankle and me hace cosa, me hace cosa. It, 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 uh, I, I, I just almost want to think six weeks uh, if, if if it you know if it's a high ankle uh, from what from what you see that from the tea leaves that you're seeing with him. This is a tough one because obviously we didn't see it. It was in practice. We didn't have video of it. This is the same side that he had the high ankle sprain in last year. We know that the recurrence rate for receivers is actually relatively speaking higher than other positions. It is like a ten percent high ankle recurrence rate from one year to the next, but 
we can't automatically assume this was a high ankle sprain. What we can assume is that, okay, injury last year to that ankle, injury this year to the ankle, not ideal. The flip side is this. James Conner has had an ankle or foot issue every year since 2018, right? These guys, this is one of the most, ankle injuries are, are the reason that you, como te encoges, y te, mm -hmm. y como que te da miedo, temor, right? You kind of, kind of gives you the ick. You feel that way. It's because they're so common. And so when they're so common, you just hear them and you also remember the, the worst ones. But a lot of times guys play through these ankle injuries, they rehab them and they're back on the field and it's not a big deal. Again, in the off season, in the preseason, uh, teams will take their time. They rehab guys, they bring them along slowly and they just make sure that they're ready for week one. We do the same thing with our guys. If a guy has a little bit of, you know, elbow tightness or forearm tightness and it's, you know, we're, we're a week into spring training. We're not going to push the guy to come back just so that he can continue to build up in live VPs, right? What we're going to do is slow him down. Most of this is just common sense, right? You have the time. This is the time to slow down. You have the whole season ahead of you. And at that point, then maybe you, you, you act a little bit differently. But right now we put our patience cap on. We make sure everybody's healthy. We get them to week one. I'm not concerned about him on Russ St. Brown. Now I'll say if I am concerned, it's like a th arbitrarily three to 5% concern. If you really wanted to go CD Lamb over Amon Ross St. Brown, Garrett Wilson over Amon Ross St. Brown, for this reason, I understand. I get it. I just personally am I'm not going to account for it that that heavily, honestly. And if Amon Ross St. Brown is there, I've been taking it before CD Lamb. I know that's kind of a personal preference thing. I also love CD Lamb. It doesn't mean I hate CD Lamb, but I definitely am taking Amon Ross St. Brown before Garrett Wilson. Maybe that's a mistake. Maybe that'll end up being a mistake. Uh, but I really think Amon Ross St. Brown is one of the best receivers in the league right now. I mean, uh, I don't have much else to say. So hopefully this doesn't, you know, recur. If it is a lateral ankle sprain, there's about an 8% recurrence. I want to say not really that significant to be honest. So I'm not too concerned about a monitor St. Brown right now. And, and, you know, for me, I, I just love, I mean, he's got such a great schedule for him. He's going to be indoors a lot. The back half of the season, he's just, he, I mean, during during the fantasy playoff weeks, he's indoors. Uh, the last two weeks, he's against Minnesota, their, 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 their defense that was a turnstile last year. And then in week 17, he's going up against the Cowboys. You know that's going to be a shootout. So, uh, and I mean, gosh, I, I want him on my team. I've had plenty of times where I've actually been at the turn in underdog drafts where I've grabbed Amon Ross St. Brown and C.D. Lamb just so that I could have the two of them basically basically like going one-on-one -on -one against each other in week 17 in championship week. So I, I, I hope to be having, having that, uh, that problem, uh, in, in best ball mania. So I almost have it. I almost have it. So I'm glad you're not worried about him. I'm a little worried about this next one. Uh, Devon A. Chain, Achane, as I told you the other day, as I put on, when you asked for Latino names, uh, I've been calling him Achane all over the place, uh, shoulder injury. Which to me, from listening to you and talking to you in the past, shoulder injuries with running backs can be scary. He's a smaller guy. He had a big guy fall on him. Uh, that, 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 what, what are your thoughts on uh, on him? Yeah, so Devon Achane. I like it. I love it, actually. Devon Achane is also kind of, yeah, it's difficult to parse. So the injury that I saw, he didn't get slammed. Maybe he did get slammed. I don't quite remember. I thought he sort of just got like slammed without somebody falling on him. And he, he landed really hard. What we assume right now is an AC sprain. It could an AC joint, which is what we call a shoulder separation, not a shoulder dislocation. Those do have somewhere between a three and four week return time frame on them. When you zoom out and sort of think, okay, what kind of player is he? What's his size? What's his frame? This is the exact type of injury that you worry about. This is the exact type of injury you worry about for Bryce Young. This is the exact type of injury you worry about uh, for, for a future Hall of Famer, Deuce Vaughn. These are the smaller guys, the impact injuries. Those are the, really the ones that you worry about. So when it comes to Devon Nachane, you don't you don't love this start. And it's a bit of it's a bit backwards from what we saw with JSN, because even though he's been there, he's already got a lot of backfield competition. On top of that, there's some very, very early sort of we're talking rumblings, very low rumblings that the Dolphins want to go after Jonathan Taylor already, right? There are already those reports. If that happens, no chance. I think right now um, he's just not a guy I'm targeting. Maybe he'll be back by week one. If I think at worst he misses week one, comes back in week two. We'll see on that, but I just don't with him. He's risky. I'll put it that way. He's a risky guy. I'm just, I don't, I don't really take a lot of him. There's too much there and I just am not interested. Yeah, I mean, I love the speed. I keep thinking about Chris Johnson uh, back in the day, just having that kind of that kind of elite speed. 
I'm, I'm hopeful. I, I, I'm hopeful. I mean, first off, I hope he gets 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 back fine, and then if it takes a week or two, great. But I, I'm actually, for me, uh, and especially you know after 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 hearing you just now, I, I'm elevating Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson a little bit more, unless you know we we they, the Godfather offer comes in for uh, Jonathan Taylor. So which. Quien sabe, quien sabe, you know, you know, say on that one. So uh, I, I'd love to see Jonathan Taylor in that in a, in a Mike McDaniel offense, but I, I don't like to speculate too much because it's too easy to be wrong, and I'd rather react than than speculate. So we got three. I, I put three quarterbacks on. We put three quarterbacks on this, and uh, just to get updates, none of them we have seen in workouts yet. Uh, well, one, and that we haven't seen them in game action yet. But uh, first one. Let, let's talk about Joe Burrow, kind of status of that calf injury, which, uh, you know, you've talked about those, those that it's soft tissue, soft tissue. Vamanos. Yeah, I think that people were really overreacting to Joe Burrow. Like I was my my Joe Burrow stacks with Jamar Chase are have gotten out of control. I'm getting Joe Burrow in the fifth round in best ball drafts. Don't fade Joe Burrow. The bottom line is don't worry about Joe Burrow. Yeah, man, it's crazy. I, I really didn't think this would happen. I, I thought that I had done a better. This is an indictment on me. I'm not doing a good job of communicating that Joe Burrow is going to be fine. I think the, the quote from Jamar Chase freaked people out. Jamar Chase told him, I think that you should wait until week five. Guys, that was Jamar Chase being over the top, being his he was making an overarching point read between the lines here he was making an overarching point that he wants joe burrow to be good by week one and if that took until week five or he wanted joe burrow to be to be good in the back half of the season and if that took until week five he he was fine with it joe burrow or uh jamar chase was just sharing his own experience like he's gonna be fine joe burrow's gonna be back there is a slight chance of recurrence uh again calf is one of those injuries that i wasn't able to get to but it it's a relatively benign uh, you know issue they're going to manage it. He's worth millions of dollars. They're going to keep him on the field. Soft tissue injuries are, are tricky, but you can manage them and he's going to be okay. I honestly don't even want to spend that much more time on him. I, I think Joe Burrow, if you can get him beyond the fourth round, the fourth round, even that's, that's a value. Go get Joe Burrow. Don't worry about the calf. Yeah. I think, I think some fantasy managers are looking out there and kind of thinking that he, you know, remembering Aaron Rodgers that year that he played with through a calf strain, but that was something that happened during the season and he played through it. I mean, he was, I mean, he had a great offensive line around him. He was still MVP that year. So, uh, so yeah, I, I look at him and, and actually our buen amigo, our compadre, Graham Barfield has pointed out very more than once, the betting markets have done nothing to the, to the Bengals nor any of the over-unders for Joe Burrow. The betting markets, those sharps, they are the ones that are not overreacting. If they're not overreacting and you're not overreacting, I'm still grabbing Joe Burrow. I'm still grabbing Joe Burrow. Uh, Kyler Murray. Coming back. Kyler Murray. Game. Yeah. They got me. They got me. All right. So Kyler Murray, the situation is a little bit more nuanced, I think, than people understand. I think I think the 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 narrative that he's going to wait until the middle of the season to come back has died down a little bit. Some people still believe that. That's probably not the case. I, I won't go on a long tirade about it uh, because we're coming up on minute thirty. But I'll tell you, I work with elite athletes. I talk to people in high places. Again, not a flex. Just I'm sorry. I'm trying trying to give some perspective here. Uh, when 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 a, an athlete wants to compete, and and if they're fully healthy, and if they're fully able to go, and if they checked all the boxes, it is almost impossible to stop them and to, to talk, to stop yourself from saying, yeah, go. So if you, and the, the flip side, these athletes, especially Kyler Murray in particular, who's been told he's the best athlete who has been the best athlete on the field since he was in middle school, since he was in elementary school, probably is probably the best high school football player to come out of Texas, which is saying a lot. You don't think that he thinks in his head, Oh, we're, you know, we're, we're our line you know, the line they set our line for, for four wins this season, I'm going to show them. You don't think that's his thought process. I've seen it. It is their thought process. They have to be arrogantly confident in order to even have the ability to, to, to do what they do. They have to be that confident. And so all of that is to say he might start. He's not at camp yet. The chances are he's probably going to start the season on the pup. This is a very important point. The pup is no longer six weeks. The pup is four weeks. When you start the season on the pup, you only have to miss four weeks and you and you get to come back in the fifth week. The Cardinals have a decision to make. They can put him on the pup. He misses the fourth week, probably comes back in the fifth week. Or they cannot put him on the pup. He takes up a roster spot. 
and they can bring him back in week two, week three, whenever they think he's ready. By the time week four or week five, I'm sorry, week five rolls around, he's going to be nine plus months. Carson Wentz, who had LCL issues, came back at nine months. Joe Burrow, his entire knee exploded, came back at nine months. Okay, so you want to say that they're not as athletic as Kyler Murray. They don't rely on their legs as much. Sean Watson came back at 10 months, right? Uh, in the middle of the season, he had his ACL in the middle of the season, came back at 10 months. These guys come back quickly. RG3, the best athletic comp for mm -hmm. Kyler Murray with LCL damage, came back in eight months and a week. These guys come back. What's he going to look like when he comes back? He might reduce his role from a rushing perspective. There is some risk with a, a recurring hamstring that he's been that he's dealt with his whole career. That is something to consider. But the bottom line is, if you cut out about, there's about a 15% decrease in rushing uh, attempts in a quarterback's first season back from an ACL tear. But man, 15% of what Kyler Murray's given from by his legs Maybe if his ceiling was Justin Fields, and but now his ceiling drops to what? Josh Allen from a rushing perspective? You know, Josh Allen rushes, runs. He doesn't run a ton, right? Like, that is what you have to look at. Again, trying to give perspective to fantasy players where I feel like it's tough for them to decipher some, based on the questions that I get in conversation I have on Twitter and everywhere else. It's not a yes or a no. It's not a, oh, he's going to go down. You know, rushing attempts are going to be reduced. That means he's, you know, He's kaput. He's going in like the 14th round in best ball drafts. You can get Kyler Murray, especially in these leagues that drive me nuts, by the way, that all of them, everybody drafts at least two quarterbacks, even though it's a single quarterback league. You can get Kyler Murray in the 14th, 15th round, stash him on your bench or on your IR if you want to. He's going to be a high upside guy, and you really have nothing to lose with Kyler Murray at this point because if he gets 15% of his rushing knocked off this season, uh, you know, 15% of what, what is 500 yards? I'll take that, right? It's not going to be a statue. It's not Matthew Stafford. It's not Kirk Cousins. So that's really my spiel on Kyler Murray. He can come back. Guys have came back at his time frame by week one, right? Guys have came back at that eight month mark. I don't think, I don't see that happening, but I do see that Kyler Murray is going to come back in the first quarter of the year. Yeah. And, and they want to see what they got in him. You know, this coaching staff didn't draft him. The, the GM didn't draft them. So they want to see what he looks like in their system. And so I think they need that this whole season. And if it means they don't, if it means that they win enough games that they don't get Caleb Williams. Okay. Well then they've got Kyler Murray as their quarterback. And, and, you know, coming at that point, what he'll be uh, 20 months off of, off of ACL surgery. Uh, I'm, I'm projecting the September of 2024 at that point. And, and he's, no, you know, he's still going to be in his athletic prime. So yes, I, I, I look at him, especially, you know, super flex drafts, you know, as a third quarterback or someone who, uh, you know, or if, if you grab it, grab me him as a second quarterback and your starter doesn't have a buy until like we week 10, 11, 12. Yeah. You, you definitely do that. All right. Last one. And he just got back to practice Brock Purdy coming off of that elbow surgery. I was really worried about this one, but uh, you, you, you actually, you work with the athletes that are coming off of a real Tommy John surgery, which he did not have. So uh, you the fact that he's back at practice, what's your uh, prognosis for uh, opening the opening day, opening week? Yeah, this, oh, this is, this is good news. He's doing really well. Uh, he's progressing exactly where you would expect him you, exactly where you, he would, you would guess him to be. He had a repair. Here's the big difference. A Tommy John surgery, the traditional surgery, you go in, you either get a hamstring tendon or you get another from the other side or from the, from the same side, sorry. Um, or you get a, a flexor tendon. And what you're going to, what you're going to see is you're going to take that tendon. Basically it becomes your new ligament. Newer procedures. What they do is they take the indwelling tissue, the tissue that's, that remains and they basically sew it up. They reinforce it and they go from there. Right. So since they reinforce it and since they didn't have to put completely new tissue in there, that can heal faster. It's not as a big of a procedure. Pitchers can actually come back from a repair in six to nine months. The difference in pitchers and quarterbacks is huge. Pitchers, the velocity, the force and the volume that they put through their elbow and shoulder is exponentially higher. It's actually the most forceful movement that humans make uh, on record. Bio biomechanical studies have shown that. Throwing a football is not as stressful. They don't quarterbacks don't do it as often and they don't do it, you know, uh, as uh, as intensely. So 
this is normal. This makes sense. Brock Purdy looks to be ready for by week one. And again, not a huge sample on this, but what you might see from Brock Purdy is a little bit of accuracy issues in the, in the beginning, but Kyle Shanahan can usually doctor that up anyway. So I, I really love to target Brock Purdy in the later rounds of, of, of best ball drafts. And um, I might have some, something up my sleeve for the, for the draft that we're in uh, coming up on Monday for you. Jorge. I might take him there. You're on mute, my friend. I've literally taken none of Brock Purdy up to now, but I think I'm going to change that starting now. Uh, I've, I've got home league drafts. I've got super flex drafts that are coming up. I really think I'm going to be grabbing him as a second quarterback. And, you know, hopefully I can stack him up with, uh, you know, McCaffrey. You know, McCaffrey, he's another receiver, but definitely with IU, definitely with Debo Samuel. Uh, I want a piece of this offense. And to get him on sale like this, vamonos. Vamonos. Uh, mi amigo, I think it's time for you and me to say vamonos. Uh, you know what? I, th this has been great. I love that we're, I love that we're doing this. Uh, otra vez, this has been uh, un, gran, un gran placer. Uh, and also shout out to uh, our amigo Mauricio Gutierrez, uh, just because. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> You're hype, man. Yeah. You're giving shout outs everywhere. I just took he's a picture. Our, I took a picture of what we're doing. He's our padrino. He's, he's our padrino when it comes to, you know, fa fantasy football uh, content in, in Espanol. But uh, hey, mi amigo. Uh, so we're going to do another show before uh, week one. So uh, look at that. We'll be at doing least one, one after. At least we, one. At yep. least one more, before, you know, before, uh, after the game, after after preseason game three. But uh, mi amigo, uh, sh shout it out. Say, say adios, adios. <laughs> bueno, number one. I pulled this up. I was looking at my phone. This is this is probably irresponsible and reckless. We were talking about Kyler Murray. I don't know if you can see that. I have I have seventy percent Kyler Murray exposure in ten drafts. So that's a lot of Kyler Murray exposure. That's where I'm at on Kyler Murray. That's point number one. Number two, mucha gracias, mi amigo. This was great. This was fun. We said twenty to thirty. <laughs> we got it done in thirty-seven. That's mostly my fault. So I will shut up. I'll try to be as concise as possible. I hope this information was as useful for everybody else. Um, talking to George has always helps me sort of sharpen up uh, and he asks the, the perfect questions and he knows exactly where to, where to put the ball. He, he's got, he's got absolutely, he's got a fire fastball, but he's also got that, that command that you want to see out of your starters. He knows exactly where to place the ball. I really appreciate him. Uh, last push for the injury prone draft guide. Make sure you go get that. It is uh 25% off, uh, 25% off right now. Not sure how long that's going to last. It expired today. Then I got more questions about it. People were getting cold feet. They saw that the promo was over. Then they started asking me. Um, again, bottom line, I said this today on Twitter. It has data. It has metrics. It has injury history. It has, it has you know, projections. It has tiers. It has rankings. It has everything you could possibly want. The bottom line is also every week, at least once a week, I update the player profiles. That's like what not, don't you, you can admit it. That's 99% of why you tuned into this show in the first place was for the profiles to hear each individual guys and, and what we have to say about them. Those get updated every week. I promise you it's it's you're not going to regret if you regret it, you can email me and I will literally refund you. It's not a big deal. It's three cups of coffee from Starbucks. It's one movie, you know, on DoorDash. It is or I'm, I mean, on Amazon Prime. It's one door, DoorDash meal. It is. It's fifteen bucks if you use the promo code. I don't think you'll regret it, but if you do, I'll refund you. I had to push it there at the end. Um, that's all I got, mi amigo. Yeah, you don't. You, you won't regret it, familia. You won't regret it, everybody. So, uh, oh one. Oh, I got. I, we got to do one last shout out. We're both playing in pros with Joe's. Give give a quick shout out to the, the charity you're playing for. Absolutely, um, United We Dream. Right, that is a charity that means a lot to me. I know it means a lot to you. Uh, it is basically a charity for youth, a youth led charity. It's a nonprofit. What they do is they raise money in order to sort of um, advocate for the rights of undocumented immigrants. This isn't a political issue. This is a social issue. This is a human basic decency issue. We should be kind to every person on this world, on this earth. If we lost you, if you don't want to listen anymore, that's then you just weren't meant for us that, that you're not our audience. And it was, it was nice. We appreciate your company, but this is what I believe in. I know George believes in it too. Um, and if you want to believe, if you want a chance to co-manage a team with me, then you can donate basically the highest donor um, wins an opportunity to draft and co-manage a team with me. That's now that's all the plugs. That's all the plugs. You can oh, find yeah. all that on, on my Twitter at FB injury doc.
Yeah, and I'm playing for Fantasy Care, so I, I just love what Scott Fish has been doing with Toys for Tots. Any kids at the holidays should always have toys to open up, so I want to make sure of that. So, uh, otra vez, everybody, this has been awesome. Look for look for this. Make sure you like and subscribe to the Injury Prone. Make sure you give you 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 subscribe, por favor, por favor. Make sure you're getting in there, okay? Because we're gonna keep giving you this great this great information. So muchas gracias otra vez to mi compadre Edwin Por Dr. Edwin Porras. Muchas gracias, muchas gracias to you and always, always take care of one another. And last thing I gotta say is adios. <laughs>